today's video is a really good one because we're going to show you three recipes from our first cookbook, Bosch, which is two years old today. Woohoo! That best selling vegan book picked us up one of these, and it also picked us up two of these. But most importantly, three absolutely banging recipes that we're gonna show you today. There's actually 140 recipes in the book. Well, that's true, yeah, there's a lot in here, but we've got our best three, our favorite three for you to watch right now, and they are chili nachos, yum. Oh, absolutely wonderful, made with mushrooms instead of mints, of course. You've got a gorgeous chili all over nachos, baked to perfection. Big burrito cake is up next, and trust me, it is a real showpiece. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah. We basically took a burrito and turned it into a tray bake. It makes no sense, but it's wonderful. And Mushroom Wellington is the last one, which is basically every vegan's perfect Christmas dinner. Imagine a roast dinner, all the trimmings, and then you pair that with potatoes, pop some gravy on there, you're in a good place. And like we said, first and foremost, we're on to chili. Now check this out. Look at how delicious that looks. That is absolutely gorgeous. That makes me want to have it right now. If you're going to make big bad nachos, you really need to make that big bad chili, and this is what that mint is going to do. So that mint is made with mushrooms instead of meat, because we don't eat meat. No. But mushrooms are still going to impart that meaty, umami flavour and give you that lovely bite. And once you've got your mushrooms out of the way, it's time to crack on with your big, wonderful chili. And the first things first, red onions. We love a red onion, don't I we? I mean, they're, they're sweet, aren't yeah. they? They're tastier. Sweet. Sometimes they're a little bit fiery, but the minute you soften them, add some garlic, you're in a good place. And coriander stalks is something we'd like to use quite a lot, because otherwise it'd just go in the bin, which would be a massive waste. It's gonna add extra pepperiness throughout that dish, and then the crunch is coming from those peppers, and that celery, and of course the onion that we put in earlier. Now it's flavor time, oregano, chili, cumin, paprika, ground cinnamon, you name it, we've got it, baby. Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> All those spices are best friends, they're gonna mingle around in that pan and start to create that unctuous deliciousness. If you were cooking this right now, it would smell delightful. You knew I was gonna say that. <laughs> uh, tomato puree is going in, that's gonna add some acidity, some rich red color. That'll go alongside the balsamic vinegar and soy sauce and create layers and layers of deep flavor. And look at the color now, especially with this red wine. It's deep, it's rich, it's red. It's exactly as you want a chili to look. This, oh man, we have to make this this weekend. <laughs> making me hungry. <laughs> this is literally one of our most popular dishes. So many people tell us how much they love this recipe. It's the perfect way to get kids to eat mushrooms. Yeah, and just lay off the chili a little bit, but the yeah. kids love it. In fact, because think about it, it's just a huge bowl of wonderfully tasty vegetables. You can't beat that. So we've simmered our tomatoes down, and of course we're gonna add some protein in the form of black beans and kidney beans, and then those mushrooms, yes. which have, all the liquid has left them, and now we've just got that gorgeous mint. And look at that chocolate and that maple syrup. <laughs> They're the things, that's the like two crazy, quirky ingredients that will just give the whole chili that little bit more. It's a secret trick really, isn't it? Yeah. I, I heard the Aztecs used to put dark chocolate in their chili and they knew how to make a chili. I mean, they invented it. Yeah, exactly. And fresh coriander, because obviously we've got the stalks in earlier on, so now you just need to put that green color, that lovely fresh pop, and just, come on, you just know it's gonna be delightful. <laughs> you could let that simmer down now for a bit actually as well. Absolutely. So that would be great to eat with some rice or however you like. But if you've got some left over the next day, what better way to treat that chili than pop it over some nachos with some dairy-free cheese and then bake it off. The smoky dairy-free cheese is the best in our humble opinion. <laughs> Look at this, and now we're gonna get a little bit of guac. The recipe for that's on Bosch.tv, as is some salsa. Ooh, look at this. I mean, obviously, you, would, you wouldn't cook your guac, would you? That would be, that would be madness. Yeah, it would be a bit weird, wouldn't it? <laughs> so the guac and the salsa come on after you take it out of the oven, as well as some pickled jalapenos, and you are in for a real treat, my friends. Yeah, if you've got a movie night booked, then just make this, and it will just make it 10 times better. Oh, and that is a beautiful shot. It is. Charlie, well done. Cat, well done too. This he is, is well done. Oh yeah. We all did. I'm well. the only one that did. Yeah, 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 well done. Where's my well done? Everybody well done. Well done to you for watching the video and hopefully being inspired to cook it. Vegan for the win. Let us know your thoughts down below. Did you like that recipe? Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And we have another one for you now, which is the big burrito cake. Well remembered. I was wondering to myself, I was like, what's it going to be? <laughs> and here it is. Look oh at it. Goodness. Oh my goodness. It is completely crackers. It's totally insane, but it is ridiculously delicious. You are going to love it. So we took all of the ingredients uh, of a burrito, 
and put them into a kind of crunch wrap, tray bake type affair. And how do we start, Ian? Uh, we start by adding a little bit of spice to the oil and then we've got those really round, lovely sort of discs of sweet potato which are going to form a lovely, bitey kind of sweet layer in the middle of our wonderful burrito cake. We're going to roast those off first because we don't want a kind of really tough sweet potato. We want them to be nice and soft and just lightly browned. And next up, we're gonna make a spice rub with all of the classic spices that would go inside a burrito rub. Now, this is perfect for like fajitas. You could do it, vegan chicken would be really good here, tofu would be really good here, but for us, what we've decided to use is that traditional fajita vegetable pepper with a little bit more red onion. Oh, man. And once we roast this off, mm -hmm. it's gonna taste absolutely sweet, still a little bit crunchy, but not quite as harsh as it was when it was raw. Well, you want to retain a little bit of crunch, but not loads. Look at how nice it looks, the colour. Eating the rainbow has never been easier. Now, there's another cook stage right here, and we're going to start that off with some spring onions and garlic clove, and already the room's going to be smelling fantastic the minute that garlic hits the pan. Oh, cooked basmati rice and kidney beans, along with that lovely flavour, it's just going to form a really, really interesting rice dish. And to be fair, you could just have that, like, for something else. Yeah. All, of the, all of the stages you can have for something else as well. Well, you could make double and then have burritos the next day. Yeah, <laughs> if you wanted to. Win. I tell you what, we do love a burrito at mm. Bosch. So, like, this is where the inspiration for this dish came from. It was trying to take that single serve experience of a, of a burrito and turn it into a sharer. Maybe we should do a massive burrito, an actual big round burrito. Yeah. I don't quite know how we do it, but we should probably think about that. But in the meantime, this is perfect, and that is a well-dressed table. Um, now we're into the, the moment of truth. This is where you're gonna need to get a little bit creative. You might need the help of a friend to build your cake. Oh my goodness. Right, that rice filling, half of it's going into that. Really, it looks like a flour. Or Tell a us flour. what we've done with the tortillas here, Ian. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, the tortillas, we kind of just sort of flop them over the side of the pan because what they're going to do is fold in on themselves to form that wonderful kind of crispy cake. It looks really cool, yeah? <laughs> it does. And past that point, it's an exercise in layering. You don't have to do it so beautifully, but it is quite nice to do everything in individual layers so that people will see them when they cut into it. And this is a good idea as well, having a, a potato masher on hand just to push it down, just to make sure that there's <laughs> uh, all the air that's inside it has been eked out and it just get a really nice tight layer that way. And wait for it, and there's something cool going about to happen. This oh way. yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that there's some like visual trickery about to happen. Here we go! Oh, beautiful. Woo! Well, that was quick. Yeah, put a lid on it, baby. In reality, that would take you a little bit longer than that, yeah. unless you're some kind of weird magician. Um, but it'd be fun. And also, <laughs> like we said before, get the kids involved. Um, get your get, mates involved. Yeah, exactly. Get yeah. your mates who don't cook very often, and you want to show them how to cook a vegan meal that's really, really delicious. Get them around. And then we're going to pop that in the oven. So that's going to go in for 20 minutes at 180 until golden brown. Flip it out of that pan onto a plate and it should look just like this. Look at the twist of the tortillas right at the top of the cake. I think it's very, very cool. Uh, and it looks all right like that, but when you chop it and you open it up and you see those layers and that color, which is gonna be coming in three, in two, in one. Oh, slow man. Come on, man, look at that. That is tasty food. Now you can see why we called it a cake and it goes perfectly with a little bit of guacamole and salsa. What more could you ask for? It's very cakey that, isn't it? Yeah, it's if, a burrito cake. If you didn't have a, um, a, a, a sweet tooth, this would be perfect for your birthday. Oh man, it was my birthday last week. Happy I'm birthday! Sure about that. Mushroom Wellington. Mushroom Wellington, did you say? Yes. Oh, this is a good one. One of our favorites, the perfect roast dinner centerpiece. Oh my goodness, look at it. I mean, like who wouldn't want to eat that? Uh, even my sister, who doesn't like mushrooms, loved this when we made it at Christmas. Perfect with gravy, roast potatoes that are crispy on the outside, fluffy on the inside. Let's get into it. And straight into making the marinade for those wonderful portobello mushrooms. We've got a really British flavor profile in rosemary and thyme, a little bit of garlic, olive oil, can't go wrong, really, can you? Absolutely, and these portobello mushrooms, which we're about to dress with that gorgeous oil, are gonna form the centerpiece of this Wellington. So you wanna get big, nice, fat portobello mushrooms that are in good condition. And look at that, like you've popped out that little stem, and then you've sort of just put the, um, they filled the gills with all of that wonderful flavor. And now we're into the main event. And this is gonna be the filling in French, I think they may call it a duchel. This is basically gonna be a mushroomy, chestnutty, bread crummy, 
filling to pack the outside of that Wellington. And our favourite three and three red onions coming back into the pan, coming oh, back out yeah. to plate. And uh, you know that they're just going to taste amazing, especially I mean, with those onions in everything. Yeah. Don't you think? Exactly. And uh, we, we've kind of taken those rosemary and the thyme that we used before, put it in here again so there's like continuity throughout the whole dish. It's a classic British dish and they're classic British herbs. Hardy, they can handle the cold weather in the UK. Bit of white wine, if you didn't want to use white wine, well, you should because it makes really, really, really good flavour. But you could use alcohol-free wine That's if you true. prefer. You might get away with some vinegar, you know, maybe even some pomegranate molasses, but I think you should use white wine. And there's the dry mix going into the wet mix and what that's going to do is form a really nice malleable dough which is going to make this main kind of encasing for those wonderful mushrooms we've cooked before. Oh man. So you can imagine we're kind of using mushrooms in the same way as it, with the chilli. We're using them in place of meat. We actually cooked this for Prue Leith, do you remember? <laughs> Prue Leith, yeah. the British TV star chef um, from Leith's Cookery School. She loved this dish. Oh my, God. I love this dish. Look at how cool that looks as well. It's just like, it's so satisfying and it's like incredibly fun. And it's almost like, um, you know, when you're just like pushing it down and forming it into that perfect lumpy shape, it's wonderful. Now we're laying this out on short crust pastry. You could absolutely use puff pastry if you prefer. A little bit of liquid like dairy free milk along the outside is gonna help them stick together. And you know what, at this bit, you can get creative with your knife. You certainly can. And look at that, nice sharp knife. Just let it do the work. And then this is a good bit, this is a good bit. Hey. Oh, nice. That is cool. And this is also a good bit. You just sort of fork it down to make sure that it doesn't explode or pop open in the cooking. You did say fork it, right? Fork it, I did, and absolutely. <laughs> and of course, at this stage, you could write your name on it. We're gonna write LOTV for our TV show, which was called Living on the Veg and that is gonna go in the oven for 40 minutes. Look at the color of that thing. That is just being in the oven for the perfect amount of time. And wait for it, wait for it. Here Moment we go, here we go. Drum roll. Oh, oh yes, that's beautiful. Right. The little mushroom slither, perfectly preserved inside that gorgeous mushroom filling. And you've got those roasties there, sprouts, carrots, parsnips, peas, all of that good stuff together, forming a truly magnificent Sunday roast. I don't know a table in the world that wouldn't be pleased to be served that. Veggie, vegan, flexi, whatever. That is an absolutely banging Sunday roast. They were our top three recipes from this book, and oh my God, they're so good. Yeah, this book, by the way, the reason why we've made this video has been out for two years. Can you believe it? Absolutely, I'm it's so happy about yeah. that. And it's done really well, lots of you have bought it, so thank you to every one of you who has bought it. Yeah, it's been a real pleasure writing this book for you. It's been a real pleasure making all these videos for you. We do this for you. If there's anything that you want to see us veganize or cook for you, yep. let us know in the comments below. And do subscribe if you're not already. Hit that little notification bell so you see our videos when they come out. And we'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.